everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about performance showing and I'm not going to go into anything really specific about performance showing because in the classes I just want to talk about the overall uh, way we do performance showing. So that includes live showing and photo showing. To go with this video I've created a show in the OMHPS photo showing. So what I'm going to do is offer critiques in this performance class. So you can attempt to take photos or have photos that are already existing, enter them into this class. And then I'd recommend going in here right away and setting yourself up if you're not already a member. It's quite simple to do. And then I will critique your entries. There's information on the site on how to do that. But basically you set up a horse, save it, and then go into the performance tab. And from there, you can add different performances for your model. And this is also, you can type in the information, such as what the horse is doing, and a little bit of information or references if you want. Once you've created your horses, you can then add them to the show. So you go to the show, you pick the class, and then add the model. And again, there's information on the site for how to use this system. But once you've uh, used, tried one or two, it's actually quite easy. The show that I'm doing starts January 28th, um, 2023. I believe that's the date I set it up for. And you have two uh, weeks to enter. Now I may do this again in the future if it goes well, but this is the first one. And for your models, you don't need a fancy background. It can be against a plain background or it can be photos you've taken at a model horse show. Since we're trying to get the idea of setting up and uh, that is really important. First thing you need to do before setting up anything is to look for photos. Now, if you have a specific model and an idea for it, you need to go online, find some photos that work for what you want to do and create your reference cards because uh, you really need reference material for performance showing in most cases. This isn't the case for most Western pleasure or anything, but for most cases it is. So for an example right here, I actually have this jump. I have this horse, I have this full setup, including the rider, and I had this set up for this specific performance event. So what you need to do is plenty of research and then create your cards. Say for example, you want to show Western pleasure and you have a quarter horse. What you should do is go into Google and type Western Pleasure, AQHA, and you're going to see a lot of pictures of horses, real horses doing what you need them to do. Take a really good look at these pictures. So this horse right here, its head is in a specific position. Um, the ears aren't supposed to be below here, but most of them are. The nose should be sticking out just a little. The reins are specific. Now here I have three. So for Western Pleasure, I would look at this. Now this is a tight rein for Western Pleasure. This is a medium rein for Western Pleasure. And this is a super, super low rein for Western Pleasure. This is probably the best that we use for a show. So we would go and try to get our reins to look something like this. The other point of doing a lot of research is to look at the horses. Now, if you have this type of horse for Western Pleasure, you're not going to want a horse with a super high head or a horse that's galloping or a horse that's in a position that's not pleasure. So for a quarter horse Western Pleasure, you'd be looking for something similar to this. Now, we don't always have this, but we're trying to get as close as possible to a pleasure horse. Of course, if you're showing other breeds, here's a Arabian. They look different. Do your research, dig into what an Arabian pleasure horse should look like, or a Morgan horse, or even a draft horse. If you enter this information into Google, they will provide you that. And then you can use one of these photos to do your reference material. Now, if your horse is doing this position, he's not a pleasure horse. So make sure you're really working to try to get the right horse for the right class. When you get to a live show, you're going to have to listen to all the classes and then when your performance class is called, you're going to go put them on the table. And here's two uh, sections. This is a, um, a Native American regalia class and we have a harness class. So for the smaller classes where there's no background allowed, you can see people have got their models all around the table. 
You want to have a card, the information card, in front of the model and the best side facing where the judge is and uh, make sure everything is correct and we'll talk about that shortly. In some classes, you'll find that the whole spot takes up more space and certain classes, certain shows have different size requirements. So in this case, the person has brought up their base and set up on there and their information card will be here somewhere on each of them. So let's say the class is going to be Western Pleasure. You're going to need a checklist. You're going to have your picture. This is what I want my model to kind of look like, my setup. So I have this model. Its head isn't where I'd like it, but it's the best model I have for this class and I'm going to go for it. It looks relaxed. We're going to run with this model. So first of all, we're looking at the bridle. Does it fit properly? Okay, it's not in the eye. If it is right here, we may have to change it. So here I pulled that back. And what I find is taking a photo of your model in the position and then look at the look at the photo. Make sure it's correct before you decide it's you're happy with it. If not, take another photo. So in the case here, I went from, oh, that's in the way to now it's not. Is the bit in the mouth? Is all the pieces in the correct way? Do your reins drape in the way that you want them to drape? So this has an even drape. Are both reins draped the same? Is your tack appropriate for the class? And does it fit correctly? Now you do not need fancy tack. You can do that. You can beat expensive tack with cheap tack, assuming that you've done a good job. That's my husband in the video. <laughs> Say hi to Greg. Bye, Greg. <laughs> so if all of this is correct, make sure we have the saddle pad. Is it fitting correctly? Is the saddle back in the right place for the horse? It's not too far back. It's not on the shoulders. Important things. The girth. Make sure the girth is not touching the front legs. Leave plenty of room, but don't put it too far back. And in Western Pleasure, I often see girths way back here, and that's bad. If you are going to have a second girth, make sure it's up here. But it's not required for Western Pleasure, nor is it recommended. Now, for the doll, you do not need a doll. But if you're not using a doll, these reins should look identical. You should put a little sticky wax on both sides, and they should be sitting here. Now, for Western Pleasure, the way the reins come through over the top and then if you're holding it in the left hand, the drape goes to the left with the right hand hanging down or vice versa. The drape goes on the side of the hand you're holding and it doesn't matter which hand that is. Now, if you choose to use a doll, it has to be correct because you will get knocked for the doll. You could have a perfect entry and then the doll not be correct. So check how a rider looks in real life and look how your rider looks. Is there seat in the saddle? If you look from the back, are they centered? So in Western Pleasure, they're pretty much vertical. Sometimes they're slightly back, but vertical is preferred. Is the hat fitting properly? Is everything correct for the rider? The stirrups is basically a straight line down. You get from the shoulders, hips, and uh, heel. So look at all those things. If you cannot get your rider sitting properly in the saddle, don't use a rider. Now here's a look at a riderless doll and you can see the reins here. Now they could have been up just a little further back and higher. Depends the hand would be about here so they should be back but you can see how it's held in place and the drape is showing here. Here is an entry that doesn't use a doll. Now this is a nan entry and it won the gold cookie so it proves that you do not need a nan uh, a doll to win but you have to have it correct. The reins, you can see here, that pretty much where they'd be, the reins would be pretty much just up the neck or they'd be here, either way. So you have the reins correct, everything's in the right position, the boots are positioned correctly, the saddle is on right, the red flag and white flag are on the jumps in the right place. So attention to detail, if it's right, you do not need a doll. But the doll, if everything's correct, the doll will always win if everything is correct on a doll rider and an entry without a doll.
Another thing when showing, it's really good to have a versatile performance horse. So the one thing you need to do is learn how to be creative with your entries. This is a standing entry. So you're gonna to have to come up with something. If you wanna show a jumper, why the horse is standing there? You're waiting for the bell to go. So that would be something you would do in your cards. However, you'd still need to jump. You still need to make sure that the flags are on the right place. The horse is fully tacked up. And the height of the jump is appropriate for the level of the horse. So this would be a low level A circuit course. It, there, she's not really fancily dressed up for a uh, jumper. She's more of a hunter, but with this height of jump, she's fine. If it's a really high jump, you'd want more appropriate jumper stuff. But this way, you can add a jump to a hunter rider that is just doing hunter pleasure. Just need to be creative. Another thing I'd like to point out for photo showing is one of my huge pet peeves. Now, in real life, this looks very doable. This horse can get around here. However, there are so many pictures I've seen at high-end model horse shows and photo shows where it looks like the horse is gonna run into the background or it looks like he just ran out of the background, especially on arena shots. So look at the difference here versus that. Now the horse, you can see where he's tracking. You know he's gonna make the distance. So that is really important, especially in things like barrel racing. Barrels do not go near a fence, that close to a fence. So you have to make sure in real life that that horse could do it. You just look at the difference of that versus that. That's questionable. So, but in real life, it looked good. But when I see it in a photo, it's very, very questionable. So make sure you make the best use out of your space so it looks like the horse is really doing what he's supposed to be doing. So start going and getting ready for your show. And what I'd recommend is taking photos and looking at each one again. And that's the same as if you're actually at the show. So take a picture of what your setup is and have a quick look at it. Now, things at a live model show are easier to get away with because it's not as obvious. As soon as you take a picture, it's way more obvious. So go through it. Is my bid in? Is the uh, blinkers touching the eyes? Or is the nose band straight? Is the right amount of tension in the reins? Are the reins going through the hands at the right place? Is the doll sitting correct? Is the tack or cart uh, fitting your specific model? Check every little piece. Are the brakes in place? Is everything tied on properly? Is it real for driving? Is this, um, is this taut where is in your brakes are a little loose? Because if the horse is moving forward, this needs to be tighter, this needs to be looser. Check every little detail, and then you can walk away from your entry and let the judge go for it. So get your models ready, and if you see this video in time, come and join my show. And if uh, you're late, check it out and see if you want me to hold another show. Good luck with all your model horse showing, and it's been great talking to you.